I'm going to paraphrase an expression here. All Let right. Let me see if you can figure out where I'm going with it. Okay. You can take the freak out of Florida. Yeah. You were supposed to. Never oh, mind. Oh, I'm sorry. But but you can't take the Florida out of the freak, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to get an example of that in today's <laughs> podcast. Well, good. That sounds great. Um, And you've heard of evangelists saying they're going to exercise the demon. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we've got a Florida story about um a Florida man who has a new method to cleanse the madness. Ooh, demons out. Demons out. Well... What would you do? You remember the whole, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Yeah. What would you do for some baby back ribs I'd right do a now? whole lot. That sounds really <laughs> good. Well, we'll find out about one local fella who had a uh, interesting way of expressing his love for the baby back ribs. Oh, I can understand that. All that and more coming up on episode five of the Florida Freak Show. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Ladies and gents, boys and girls. Step right up for the Florida Freak Show. Welcome back to the Florida Freak Show. I'm Corey O'Donnell. And I'm Kirsten O'Donnell. And if you've ever read a Florida story or seen a newscast, you know that Florida's greatest export are weird stories from people that live and play here. That's right. Yeah. Ripped from the headlines, as always, our freakiest Florida finds for the week. So are we ready? Yep. All right. Our first story from ClickOrlando.com. A Florida man is behind bars after stabbing his roommate in the chest and then turning the knife on himself, claiming he committed the crime to release Satan. Release Satan. Deputies responded to a Sanford apartment for a reported stabbing. When they arrived, deputies found a subject cutting himself with a knife and a victim suffering from a stab wound. Wow. The stabber was identified as 25-year-old Joseph Dolash, He was making comments such as, Satan is a worm and is going to come out of me. Mm. The stabby, his roommate, was taken to the hospital and later told deputies that his roommate cut him multiple times before stabbing him. Wow. Dolash had then told his roommate to suck the worm and the devil (laughs) out of his blood from a cut on his wrist. Dolash was arrested and charged with attempted murder and sexual battery. Oh, did this guy like consult a televangelist? Like this just feels weird to me, like in so many ways. I'm like, can we get Jim and Tammy Faye on the horn? Right. Whatever happened to just a good good old exorcism? Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking like get demons out and just stick your hand on their forehead and just push them to the ground. Like in Fletch Lives or something like that. It's like <laughs> it's like, you know, there's gotta be some other way that's a lot easier than just Cutting into somebody. It's not like you're allowing steam to escape a bag or relieving pressure like in a tire by getting air out or whatever. It's not the same, is it? I mean, so it's, so you you cut a hole in yourself and the demons don't come out of you. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like we're getting really medieval here. So maybe just uh, how about just get some leeches? It's the Ooh, same concept, right? I and, like it, and it's time tested. Like people have been doing it for hundreds, thousands of years. So why not? I like it. I like it a lot. Wow. You know, I've been watching during this pandemic. Yeah. Being unemployed. Mm-hmm. I have been watching a lot of episodes of Criminal Minds. Oh yeah, right. Like pretty You're much a I've ton of it. Way too much of it. <laughs> to the point where hey. I think I should either be an FBI profiler or a serial killer. Yeah. One or the I could go either way yeah. at this point. They both have their You're appeal. Good either way. But I now think that the world is filled with with people like this unfortunate young man here yeah. who, who clearly has some sort of issues. Completely. I, I I just, I feel like everywhere I turn now, because I've been watching too much Criminal right. Minds, the world is just filled with folks who are ready to stab you to let your demons oh, out. And, I and, know. It's scary. It's scary out there. And that's it's a really tough call because, you know, when you're roommates with somebody, there's like this, you know, sort of level of trust that you've sort of built, you know, as being like part of their part of roommates. So uh, they, they, they they usually have your best interest in mind. So you would hope you would think so. Maybe like if like so if you suspected that I had the devil in me, I would hope that you would, <laughs> you know, show more compassion first. I mean, I would actually be OK with you if you said, hey, I'm going to get a preacher over here and he's going to exercise the demon from you. But maybe don't like take a knife to me. Please don't. I mean, I'd probably start with an intervention first yeah. and work my way up right. to the exorcism. But but sure, yeah, yeah. But, you know, in life, roommates are complicated. It's a difficult situation. Yeah. I mean, 
we have a close friend right. who found a roommate on Craigslist. Mm. Oh, yeah, right. I remember that. And and thankfully, it worked out well for them. But yeah. that's a good way to get a serial killer as your roommate. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, worked out great, but it's not something that I would recommend. Right. Single white female. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. kids, that's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> From the 90s. Maybe the 80s? Maybe the 80s. I'm We're not, not sure. sure. I'm pretty sure it's the 90s. Well, I, you know, I was thinking about this also, and, and does the devil appear in the shape of a worm? I mean, I know the devil takes many shapes. Right. Well, is, he was is a, worm a common one? He was one? a snake in, in the Bible mm-hmm. uh, with Adam and Eve, so I guess it wouldn't take that much for him to be that much smaller. I'm just thinking to myself, it's like, how did the devil get in there if he didn't have any cuts before? Did he like go in through some other orifice? I Kids, mean, just... this this is why you don't eat raw meat right, right here. Yeah. They tell you tapeworms, but it might be devil worms. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Devil worms are actually a thing. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I I, I found that out today. Today I was today years old when I learned <laughs> that uh there is a creature known as a devil worm. Get this, they live two miles below the surface of the earth. Wow. They're not large. They're not like giant sand. So they worms. never come up to the No. Is the, that why they're called devil worms? Because the they never come thing. up to the surface. Well, yeah, because they live they're deep in the yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely unrelated really yeah. to the topic at hand. But yeah. You know, a little, the more you know. And now for something completely different. Yeah. So our next story actually comes to us from Oregon. Okay. Or Oregon, if you Going prefer. Going away, but we know away it's, from Florida. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. From KTVZ in Oregon. All right. A Florida motorist. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there has, That's to, be how you, there has to be a Florida connection somehow. A Florida motorist on Inter- Interstate 5 in Oregon called Oregon State Police to report he'd been shot at while driving. Wow. Troopers said that it was actually a tire blowout. Oh, yeah. That they discovered like a that, shotgun sometimes. Right. They yeah. discovered that after responding to the call at a rest area. Yeah. So subsequent investigation revealed that the driver was under the influence of marijuana. Mm, okay. <laughs> that kind of makes sense. The state police says that his paranoia led him to believe that he'd been shot at after a tire on his vehicle had a blowout. Yeah. The driver was Juan Felipe Moreno of Parts Unknown in Florida. Parts Unknown. When Oregon State Police dug just a little bit deeper, they found marijuana and they found a package of diapers in the car that had nearly 30 grand in cash stashed away in it. Cha-ching. Right? So Moreno and his passenger are now being charged with money laundering. Okay. <laughs> and Moreno was also cited for DUI. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, the the paranoia, right, of of the marijuana. Well, this is to me this is kind of genius. I mean, if now if you were the police, like the last place that I would think to look for money or weed or anything like that would be in the diaper bag or in or with a bunch of diapers diapers to me convey like a sense of responsibility it's like hmm. hey i'm taking care of my kid making sure that they're you know i pay my bills right right making making, <laughs> making sure everything it's like i'm looking after them you know i've got diapers it's like everything would have worked out really really good here had he not been so paranoid from the drugs well, i would think and also you know i think if it's a couple yeah or maybe if there's a baby in the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, that, would, see, that would help out. And a lot you see too. a package of diapers, you yeah. go, Oh, okay. Yeah. When it's two twenty year old guys who smell like weed and uh, who knows if there was anything else in the car. It might have just been a bag of weed and a package of diapers with thirty grand in it. <laughs> you know, it just occurred to me that like if you take out the weed so much of this sounds like that scene in Raising Arizona where he's like, I'm going to be taking these huggies and uh, whatever else you got underneath that in that cash register. I mean, it just sounds a lot like that. You know, it's the one fatal flaw, though, from Florida Man Always is that there's usually always drugs involved, and that's where everything goes wrong. It's like the paranoia that happens from the drugs screws everything up. Otherwise, they would do, they would do so well in these situations, you would think. You, know? you would think. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know... Oregon's got its own special kind of weird. Yeah. But that, I think, is is mostly in the Portland area. It's really the only part of Oregon I'm familiar with. Okay. Um, it's got its own special breed of weird. Yeah. But apparently this was weird enough yeah. for, uh, for the state troopers to do a little deeper dive into what was going on in this situation. Well, we're so glad that us as Floridians, you know, can take our weird all over the country. 
You know, we we can show up and out weird even the weirdest just because we're from Florida. I, yeah, I, I guess it's something to be proud of. Why not? Yeah, you yeah. You don't hang your hat on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where... You, you said it went wrong with the smoking weed. Was it really that point that went wrong? I, I mean, did it not go wrong at some point when they decided to, you know, drive from state, assuming state, to, assuming interstate commerce here? Yeah. Driving from state to state with, you know, 30 grand and big bag of weed? Yeah. Like, is that not? Well, I mean, I think just the fact that the guy thinks somebody's shooting at him. I mean, already sounds a little suspicious. Yeah, I'd give um, you that. So, like, I think if there was... And I got the impression this occurred in a rural area. Yeah, like, otherwise he, you know, and then anybody that's coming from out of town is probably going to be, you know, just automatically, like, raise their ire just a little, especially somebody from so far away, just because it's like, hey, we're going to treat local people maybe a little bit better um, than someone that's out of state. I, I should, I'm just I'm just spitballing here. But, sure. I mean, it's just a possibility. And you but know, just somebody thinking that you're going to be shooting at them. It's like, well, it could just be that the tire blew. I mean, that also could be the reason. Well, that. and the fact that probably for the next 20 miles, it was going thump, 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 yeah. thump, 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 yeah. thump. But, you know, people, people right. don't think, <laughs> you know, and, and if you're going to stash 30 grand, stash it in a bag of dirty diapers, not just a, a package of diapers. Right. I think. Nobody's going to go snooping no. around in dirty diapers. Absolutely not. Yeah. I certainly am not. I, I try not to make a habit of it as well. <laughs> All right. Our next story comes to us from Newsweek. Now, wow. uh, a little a little background. In early April, so well over a month ago, okay. Miami Beach ordered grocery store customers and employees to wear face masks to prevent against the coronavirus. Right. Okay. Miami-Dade County, for those of you who are not familiar, has been pretty hard hit in the state of Florida. It's one of only three counties in Florida that actually wasn't included in phase one's reopening plan for right. the state. So many cases that it's just really, it's been tough. Sure. So again, Miami Beach said you need to wear masks. Right. Well, at least one man shopping at a Miami Beach public store doesn't like that rule. He doesn't like it at all. No, he was caught on video going off on a nearly two minute profanity laced tirade at a code officer who happened to be in the store. Wow. The code officer was just conducting a routine check when the video was captured. The man called the code officer a terrorist. Oh. Shouted, there's no pandemic. I don't know why I'm giving him that accent. This is Miami Beach. He probably sounded nothing like that. (laughs) And also said, quote, you are in violation of my bleeping constitutional rights. Oh, it's constitutional rights. Gotcha. Well, not surprisingly, Miami Beach Mayor Dan Gelber says that yelling or cursing at city workers who are putting themselves at risk and just doing their job is really pretty unacceptable. But he also added that the city's not going to begin arresting people for not wearing masks or violating social distancing rules. He just wants people to follow these procedures, even if you disagree with them. Right. Isn't it ironic that after living a lifetime where, you know, it's shady and suspicious to be wearing a mask inside of a store, that now when, you know, that it becomes sort of common or, or a bit more of the new normal to wear a mask in the store, now everybody's like, I don't want to do that at all. I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> uh, but I guess, you know, that's what happens. It's, it's at least refreshing that a constitutional scholar would Ooh. have been in a situation like this, you know, ha- having this discussion with the code officer. But I'm wondering what constitutional amendment he's referring to here. <laughs> There's, you now, know, I'm, I'm not a constitutional <laughs> scholar, and I, I will not. admit that. I am not. So we're really treading in, you know, into some thin ice here. I mean, because we don't know nearly as much as this guy does. Clearly. Because he's, his constitutional rights have been infringed. I'm just trying to, like, go through some of them. Now, now you know, freedom of ch- speech, he, he's, he's you know, speaking He freely. certainly spoke freely. So he's like, probably not the second one. We're pretty sure he probably is a big fan of that one. Uh, not going to be a problem there. Uh, third one, quartering of soldiers. We don't really oh. need to do that sort of thing anymore. I mean. Maybe what we could do is remove that amendment and stick in an amendment for wearing, you know, not having to freedom, wear a mask. Freedom, freedom to have a naked face. Yeah, to have a naked face. That way, the constitutional scholar can get what he wants. But you don't. You have to have an amendment to repeal an amendment. Oh, you're right. Like prohibition. Yes. 
Oh, so so now 20, we have to make right. a whole new so amendment. So twenty eighth amendment is to repeal the third amendment so that we can make the 29th, the 29th amendment. amendment. Yeah. Okay. So a bit more paperwork, I'm sure, is involved. <laughs> but and, and uh, I'm again, sure they've got a form for that down at the Miami Beach Code Enforcement Office. If only we had a way to like do a phoner, you know, and bring this guy in as a constitutional <laughs> scholar, so that we could have a discussion with. They him didn't on what even exactly release the man's to... name. Oh, okay. That's and he too was bad. not arrested. Now, I, here's my question. I'm pretty sure that when you go into Publix, there is a sign. That says something along the lines of no shirt, no shoes, no service. Right, yeah. He's cool with wearing a shirt and shoes. It's just the the mask. Yeah. That, well, like, we're not, it's okay that we can force him to wear a shirt and shoes. Yeah, well, we, and we can't even for sure say that. He may actually have a beef you know, with that. But maybe because it says that, he's like, because I mean... I, you know, there are times where I don't want to wear pants, but that's, <laughs> you know, it's a common courtesy to everyone in public that and in publics that I do that, you know, as as just a common courtesy to all of them. So, well, thank you for wearing pants. I'm a hero. <laughs> you really are. Yeah. You're, I'll continue you're a, to do you're it. You're a pant wearing hero. Yeah, it's it's a, it's against what I believe in, but I'll continue to do it. Now, I love a good conspiracy theory as much as the next gal. Who doesn't? Right? Yeah. And I could wax poetic about some of my conspiracy theories. Right. But I won't. Okay. And I certainly don't scream about Not the time nor the place. Not the, uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I could scream about them in Publix. Sure. If I wanted to. Mm-hmm. I choose not to. This guy is the embodiment of... Pretty much everybody on my Facebook feed for the last couple of weeks that I've been hitting the 30 day snooze on. Yeah. He's I like haven't a been unfriending member, them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely like if you could just snooze somebody in public. Yeah. Publix. Yeah. And really, doesn't this, I mean, Publix is a nice store. Yeah. Very nice. The store doesn't scream, the story doesn't scream Publix no. to me. Maybe like, maybe Walmart, maybe Save a Lot. This mm-hmm. isn't. This isn't Publix. No, it's just, well, it's just not right anyway. I mean, it's just, it's, there's no real great place for this to happen, but. True, true. um, Personally, I like the masks. Yeah. I I have learned that um, if I wear a mask to the store, I don't have to put on makeup. Yeah. Oh, it's really just kind of a waste of time because it's just going to be covered by the mask. Right. So. You know, I'm I've I, I I may just start wearing a mask in everyday life after this whole situation's over. I might just keep doing it. It might be time for me to stop brushing my teeth. I don't really have to do it anymore. Ooh. I don't have to worry about um, bad breath except for with you. Um, Thanks. <laughs> so, but I mean, if I have a mask on, it would usually like keep that sort of thing out. So, there are lots of advantages to wearing a mask. I'm so. going to foil your plan right now. You don't have dental insurance, so I would oh, encourage you to continue. Okay, I'll keep doing it. Yeah. And I'm already in the habit of it, so let's just keep the routine going. It's That's, a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, maybe some other time. All right. Well, finally, from our very own hometown of Cape Coral, All Florida. right. Cape Coral. Whoop, whoop. From WFTX.com, and yep. we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. A Cape Coral man got violent when he refused to leave a Chili's restaurant after it closed. Cape Coral police received a call from the restaurant after 36-year-old Scott Bolton refused to leave or pay his bill that cost $17.54. All right. Bolton then tried to sneak out without paying his bill. An officer went to place Bolton under arrest, but Bolton resisted and punched the officer in the face. (laughs) Jeez. The officer attempted to use his taser twice, but it wasn't effective. Okay. Bolton tried to grab the officer's taser in an attempt to take it away from him and continued to resist the uh, attempts to handcuff him until backup officers arrived and helped take the man into custody. This sounds like an action movie scene. Right. Bolton, by the way, made threats to kill the officers once he gets out of jail. Adding even more to the action movie scene. Okay, right? great. All right. And you know what's great about all this is that it's all over. Well, I can't say for sure. But it seems like all of this is taking place over a bill for eighteen dollars, seventeen dollars, seventeen foot fifty four. And I right? doubt he's a good tipper. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know times are tough. Hey, we're dealing with it too, you know. But 
is this really the hill you want to die on? Is this the <laughs> is this is this the cross you want to bear? Like I'm refuse. I'm taking a stand against seventeen dollar and fifty four cent bills. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah, pick your battles now. Yeah. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Yeah, I mean your your bill there might be a couple hundred yeah, bucks. That could be tough. You know, you, you kind of got to know going in that that's going to be bad. But you know, but but maybe not, not. Chili's. Yeah, I mean Chili's. You you go there, you enjoy the chips it's a and salsa. Friendly place. Yeah, they're giving you free chips and salsa. When I have questions. Though. Yeah. Okay. So in the midst of our co- coviditude, in the midst of the COVID-ity. pandemic, covidity. In the midst of the pandemic. It's our new COVIDity, like our new reality. Restaurants have only, until until very recently, have only been open for carry out. Right. What what is Scott Bolton doing? Scott, inside? don't call me Michael Bolton. Yeah. yeah. What is he doing inside the chilies in the first place? Hard to say. I don't know. Like it just it doesn't seem to I mean Chili's does the curbside either. carry out. Right. Or yeah. the to go or whatever they call yeah. it. I mean, and they've always been good at it for the longest time. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I I'm not an expert on dining and dashing, but um <laughs> I know that if I were if I were to do something to that effect. I'd probably try to fly under the radar, not make a big scene, you know, maybe like, oh, I excuse myself to go to the bathroom, you know, figure out a way to like, you know, just sort of sneak out. Hard to do if there's nobody in the restaurant. Well, sure, when the place is empty. But, you know, maybe whatever it is, the exact opposite of creating a big scene. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But how do you create a big scene when nobody's even there? I don't know. I don't know. This is clearly a guy who just doesn't understand how to follow directions right he is inside the restaurant yeah when he's not supposed for to be probably a to-go order yeah. i would assume yeah. when you already don't need to go inside the restaurant yeah. for to-go orders and now you're in a pandemic and you really aren't supposed to go inside the restaurant yeah he gets his bill he doesn't pay it the officer comes he won't get arrested follow instruction following directions i get it you're a non-conformist yeah but following directions sometimes just makes your life a little bit easier. Right. I wonder if this is like a kind of a big stab of a theory in the dark or whatever, but going back and, and looking over the story again, maybe he's just really missing human touch. Oh. You know, reaching for the taser, you know. He just wanted to hug. Maybe he just wants a hug. Yeah, it's possible. I mean. And his baby back ribs. Yeah, and his baby back ribs. I'm going inside to see people, you know, having an argument with someone. That's passionate. I mean, maybe it's just that human connection that he's missing. So he's just lonely. Yeah. Oh, well, now I feel sad for him. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're all... We're trying to help you out, Scott. Don't call me Michael Bolton. We're trying to help. <laughs> Do you remember that song, Closing Time? Yeah. Late Love 90s. Love the song, Semisonic. Semisonic. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I know who I... Yeah. Want to taste me home. Right, taste me home. I, 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 you don't have to go to home. taste me home. But we you get, can't We can't sing anymore. Here. We have to clear the music. Yeah, exactly. You only get a few seconds. Yeah. I, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> I feel like he should get that tattooed on him yeah, or something. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I, I feel I would be remiss if I did not bring up that not that many years ago, right? Mr. O'Donnell, yeah. seated across from me, was actually the webmaster at WFTX. I was. In another com. lifetime, I would have actually posted this story, probably. Do you remember ever having any good stories like this? Oh, I don't. I mean, this one's definitely... Uh, this one definitely feels like it wasn't it wasn't necessarily something that would have happened here, maybe something that would have happened elsewhere in Florida. Not that, you know, Cape Coral is immune from that sort of thing. We I'm certainly aren't. All. But it's it's such a good story like a good story in that sensibility of, you know, of a great Florida story that um it's really I just don't remember ever having one that I thought, oh yeah, that's something that happened during my watch. Yeah, Cape Coral is definitely not immune to weirdness. Just the other <laughs> no. day, we had a gentleman walking down the main drag in Del, uh, Del Prado, yes. completely naked. Just completely naked. Just completely Birthday naked. Birthday suit, and that's it. I mean, it is warm out. It is. I mean, I don't know what his excuse was, but... Well, he forgot to wear his mask for Honestly, one Honestly, I did say that I don't like to wear pants. I guess it could have been me. You know, we can't say for sure. <laughs> Um, I could have blacked out, had, had like a little brown out and, you know, found myself. I don't know. You'll have to, you'll have to, that'll just be something for us to think about, I guess. 
All right. Well, <laughs> those were our freakiest Florida finds for Great. the week. Did we learn any lessons this week? Uh, definitely that the mating ritual of of Florida people are is to make a big scene about everything, you know, or or to or to or see something wrong. I've just it's like it's just the mating ritual that we're used to. It's how we, you know, plume out our feathers. You know, that's that's we get all puffed up. That's that's one of the that's one common denominator I see in so many of these Florida stories. But I definitely saw it in some of these. Um, I learned a new way to exercise a demon. Oh, yeah. Uh, or at least don't one, try it at home. Theory, kids. Not anything that I want to deal with at all. Mm-mm. Um, And uh, let's see. What else did we learn? Um, uh, Diaper bag. Not the best place to hide thirty thousand dollars in your weed. Dirty diaper bag. Maybe, maybe a better maybe a better place. Maybe. And certainly don't get high while you're transporting it because it could lead to um you giving it all away a little bit earlier. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for joining us again for yeah. another slice of Sunshine State Silliness. Yeah, remember to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. That's at FLA Freak Show. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps us out and helps us find more freak fans like you. To enjoy the show. Until next time, I'm Corey O'Donnell. And I'm Kirsten O'Donnell. We will be back next week. And until then, let your Florida freak flag fly.